excited. Today is the reveal of our incredible Curb Appeal makeover. This made such a huge difference on our house. It increased the value of our house so much, which is absolutely incredible. So we did renovations on the inside of the house and the backyard, but the front always kind of remains the same. And I always felt like you would drive right by it, not knowing that there was this beautiful house inside. So let's start with what the house originally looked like. These are the listing photos. This is what the house looked like when we bought it. Super charming, super cute. Front of the house was really traditional. Actually, the whole house was really pretty traditional, which isn't really our style. Then when you walked in, there was this living room that had a wall that went all the way across with a fireplace. Very, very narrow living room. And on the other side of the living room was the kitchen. Now, kitchen was nice, nice size, but no kitchen island. That kitchen then had a tiny little den which led out to the backyard. Backyard was major, so freaking beautiful. All this ivy covered little nooks and crannies. It had this big fountain in the middle. It had like a nice courtyard, a big pool in the back. Really so many amazing things that sold us on the house. First thing we did was a renovation on the inside of the house. You can see that we opened up the entire living space. So we removed that wall that divided everything in half. It gave us a big, huge open concept, which is really important if you do not have a large house. We put in a giant island that could be eaten. That's where we eat pretty much every meal. There was room now to do a nice dining room that overlooked the outside. We extended our master by three feet so that we could give it its own entrance. So not only did we give the master its own entrance, create a legitimate bedroom, but we also added a ton of closet space and made the footprint larger. Then about a year later, we tackled a little bit in the backyard. We transformed it into this beautiful, beautiful backyard. We put in a glass fence that then extended the eye line. So what that did actually is it gave us more visual square footage. It didn't increase our square footage, but visually, when you're standing in the house, you can see the far depths of the backyard because that glass fence extends your eye. For resale, that's gonna be a huge thing. The front of the house, we had just painted gray. That was basically the only thing that we did. We got rid of the yellow and painted it gray. I always felt like it did not do justice to what was inside the house. This fence in the front was falling apart. It was the original picket fence, was in decent condition when we bought it. Three years later, it was literally collapsing. I would drive up and be like, oh my God, like I was dying. So this whole thing started with just wanting to do a fence, like modern farmhouse vibe, a little sleek, crisp, um, but some warmth. So we'll have the new fence, we'll do new landscaping, and those two things combined will make the house feel really fresh. I reached out to Shirley Bobshaw. I worked with her on Home and Family. She's a gardening expert. She's incredible. It was actually Shirley who said, you could kind of like redo the porch a little bit and it would make a huge difference. If you put one big wood beam, like a big wooden header on top, that would give it a little bit more of like a modern farmhouse vibe. You could do these modern plants. And so it was really surely that set me on this journey of like, maybe we should do more than just the fence and the landscaping. I started getting super inspired by these open porches with no railings, these kind of dark, moody farmhouses with big exposed beams, the natural wood and the black, the open porch. This really became my design. Now this is something that I think is super helpful for everybody to use. You can use a program like Canva, which is totally free, and actually start mocking up what your design is gonna look like so you can get a sense of visually whether it works or not. I literally just took a photo of my house, popped it into Canva, and started bringing in random elements. Like I would find landscaping that I liked and I would remove the background. I found beams, I would remove the background. It allowed me to start layering things on. Both those fences on the right and the left were just pictures that I added in. I could even start adding in furniture, play with different roof styles for the actual porch, play with different paint colors. I figured maybe I could do two-tone. It was sort of once I got to this place that I was like, I think I'm starting to see it. Let's do a black modern farmhouse with big natural wood exposed beams. I even imported in um, furniture, you can see the difference between different landscaping and furniture. And ultimately, this was basically my before and after. So we started off with the fence, removing the old picket fence, getting ready to lay the footings for the new fence. And you can see it also has this like curly Q sort of flower bed in the front, which we're gonna get rid of and modernize. This was the existing porch. The pathway leading up to it was falling apart and another kind of curly Q flower bed with roses, very traditional that we were gonna modernize. Same with the porch railing, the finials, all of that was gonna go making an open porch and these guys started working. This is where things went a little south and I'm gonna make it quick, but I do want you to learn from my lessons. 
For the actual porch extension, we decided to basically double up the length of the porch, make it all the way the full length of the house, do big wood beams, really make it like a focal feature. We hired someone who was working with the fence crew. So the fence crew was licensed contractors. This was a guy that was working with them. He stayed late one night. We start talking. He says that he's a contractor. He does kitchens and remodels and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, amazing. We want to do this little porch extension. Can you do it? He was like, yeah, no problem. He gave me a quote. Quote was amazing. He had some cool ideas. I was like, great. This is awesome. We move forward right away. I did not check to see if he was licensed. The real reason that you want someone licensed is that there's recourse. If something goes wrong, you can actually make a complaint that goes attached to their license. So they have a vested interest in making sure that everything is always up to code, that it lasts, that they return your calls, that if something breaks, they show up. When you don't work with someone licensed, yes, it's oftentimes much cheaper and sometimes you're doing something small and it doesn't matter, but if something doesn't go right, you're sort of screwed. And that's what happened to us. It became clear very early on that he did not know what he was doing. My mom is a general contractor and she came to the house and she started seeing some things and she's like, Orly, you, this isn't good. Like this is a problem. She started trying to work with him and the more that she was talking to him, the more that she realized like he cannot do this. He cannot take this on. We had gaping holes in the house. We had things going on that he did that was so, so bad. So ultimately I needed to fire him after already paying him about 70% of the job. Working with someone brand new and realizing that he doesn't know what he's doing and he promised that he did and he doesn't and I feel completely, like I feel like such a fool. I'm just so... Had to fire him. Had to hire new people to not only take over, but to fix what he did wrong, to bring everything back up to a safe level where it was watertight, where it was gonna last, where it wasn't gonna warp and collapse. So we ended up spending more money on this than we thought. But ultimately, it was a really good lesson to learn. I worked with only licensed people from then on out. Everything is beautiful. We got exactly what we wanted. So now it's time for all the fun stuff, the design and the decor and all the little elements that make it really feel like home. So I started off with landscaping and this was my inspo. I loved this sort of tonal soft. I loved the blonde grass and the lavender. I sent all these photos over to Shirley and she kind of gave me like a shopping list and said, go to the nursery. These are the plants you're gonna wanna ask for. I walked around, I sort of FaceTimed her, showed her different plants. She told me what would work really well together, what would exist in the same light and all of that. And everything was delivered and planted. Then I had a few fun DIYs planned for the front. I made this mat in a Cricut video a while back. It said the house was clean yesterday. Sorry, you missed it. And I loved it, but I actually needed something long and skinny. So I remade a new one with a freezer paper stencil, some black paint. I absolutely love the way this new proportion came out. And now it was time for my actual furniture. There were two things I knew that I wanted. Originally we were gonna do a porch swing. And then I decided the layout, it actually wasn't really working. So we thought a couch, so I thought, oh my God, amazing. An L-shaped couch, it could be like nap zone, like heaven. We also wanted rocking chairs, but I want like cool, badass, special, unique rocking chairs. And I can't wait to show you what I got. So let's start with the sofa. There is no other option when it comes to outdoor furniture than outer. It is the most like versatile, long lasting, good quality, cool design, smart furniture you're ever gonna find. The number one thing that I'm obsessed with about outer is they've got these built-in covers. They're actually sewn into the back. So opening and closing your sofa takes two seconds, which means that you're always gonna keep it looking really fresh. They also have three collections. In our backyard, we have the all-weather wicker, which I love, it's like beefy and hardy. And for the front, I wanted something that was gonna be modern. So they just released this aluminum collection. So I was like, okay. I am gonna do the aluminum outer four piece L shape in white, in freaking white. The fabric is like stain resistant and water resistant and mold resistant. You can just clean it super easily with like a little spongy water. So if you guys are thinking of getting an outdoor sofa, it's gotta be outer. Like it's gotta be outer. It's the absolute freaking best. I'm completely obsessed with it. Then it came down to the rocking chairs and I put this post up on my social and I was like, what do you guys think? And everybody was obsessed with these woven chairs as was I. They're just modern, but also like nostalgic. The weaving of it is so beautiful. And I looked into the company and like my crush on this company <laughs> went deep, very, very deep. 
So the whole story behind Masai and Co. is really freaking cool. This guy from Nashville moved to Nicaragua to join the Peace Corps and to learn Spanish. He ended up totally falling in love and didn't want to leave and started a reforestation project. Basically, they would take like agricultural land that had been depleted and turn it into these sustainable forestry projects, which then provide a ton of lumber. So then he started playing around with furniture design and that's when he met his wife. She's from a town called Messiah, which is like an artisanal town. And together they created Messiah & Co. And basically it is this hand carved furniture that's in sort of a mid-century modern design mixed with the local weaving techniques and aesthetics from the local town of Messiah in Nicaragua. It creates this beautiful heirloom furniture and that's where their phrase comes from, from seed to seat, because they plant, reforest the land and then create this beautiful furniture. So I was just completely in love and I needed to have them. So this is actually footage of my chairs being woven. These are the chairs that I decided to do. It's got the beautiful high back with the mot mot pattern, which is actually based off the Nicaraguan bird. It's just so freaking cool. Ugh, so excited. Installation day is finally here. The aluminum collection is so cool. It all comes in one piece. So there's no assembly. It's super lightweight, really easy to put together. And basically I got two corner pieces and two armless pieces. And with that, I can create multiple configurations. Outer is totally modular, so you can always swap it around. All you do is create your setup, use these little hooks to connect them together, and then move them around later if you want to. Then it was time for our actual rocking chairs, which came... Oh my god, it's so pretty! Holy guacamole. I was clearly very excited. They are probably one of the most beautiful handmade things I've ever owned. And they look so cool against the black house. Oh, and I'm so <laughs> <Your> face. <laughs> What's happening? A little healthy ball busting keeps our marriage fresh. Uh, so another thing that I got was actually this really beautiful teak table to go in between the rocking chairs. And even looking at the way that they construct this is so cool. It's like a puzzle. Very, very few screws are needed because they create it like, a, it's like a piece of artwork. Another absolute must was the outer outdoor rug. This is called the 441 because that's how many plastic bottles they recycle into this rug, which is so cool. I've had the 1188, which is like their biggest size in our backyard for over a year. And somehow it just always stays looking clean. And that's because of the way they weave it with like multiple colors, which is just genius. All right, guys, that's it. We are done. It's time for the reveal. Here's a reminder of what the front of our house looked like. Man, it was hurting for certain. Let's take a look at the after. Ah!